make a drop shadow effect in CSS. Now we're getting into some fancy stuff. Uh, but I think this is the fun stuff. Um, the reason I ask is because if you look at this this page that we're trying to build here, you notice, I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually a very, very subtle drop shadow behind here that just makes this area sort of pop out a little bit more. It's a very subtle design thing. Down here too, you see, the, I don't know if you can see, it's hard to see, but if I took it off, you would notice there's a very, very subtle uh, drop shadow there as well. And there's a drop shadow behind there, but we'll we'll deal with that one later. Let's start by just adding these drop shadows to these two divs, this priority div right here, as well as this main div right here. Um, to do that, let's start by removing these these lines, the borders that are around there. Um, I think the borders have served their purpose for us. When we were laying things out, it was nice to have those dash borders to kind of remind us of where things were um, and, and to sort of help us understand where the borders are in relation to everything. But now that we've, we've sort of organized everything the way we want and everything's laid out the way we want, I don't think we need those borders anymore. So to do that, we're going to go back to Text Wrangler. And here's a great trick. Rather than deleting this, I'm just going to change this to transparent. Transparent is actually a valid color value in CSS. And the reason I like to use transparent is that it doesn't change any of that. It means that if I ever want to go back, if I need to do more layout, I can just change this back to, to white or something like that. And then I'll be able to see where all my, my divs are and go back to, to doing some layout. Let's go ahead and reload. And look at that. Now all of my borders have disappeared. Um, if we look at this, we see there's a very, this, it's very hard to see, but it's there. Trust me, there's a very subtle drop shadow there and there. And on our page that we've done, there's no drop shadow yet, but we're going to add one. Okay, let's go to our CSS. And what we need to do is we need to use what's called the, the box shadow um, um, attribute. And this is what it looks like. Let's actually go to, I'm going to add it to, um, I'm going to go ahead and add it to, let's start with the, the priority one, because I think that's going to be easier to see there. Um, I'm going to add the box shadow attribute. And for this, okay, um, we're going to add a, there's a bunch of different values. Okay, this is one of those, this is a bit more complex, um, but just stay with me, it's going to work. Okay, what we're going to do is the first value is going to be a pixel value, and this is what's th this is the horizontal offset. So this is the distance um, that the the drop shadow is horizontally from from the 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 edge or, or whatever it is that you're trying to do. So I'm just going to do something small like five pixels. Okay, um, I'm not going to put a semicolon there because I've got a few more values I need to put here. The second value is your vertical offset. That's the distance up and down, like the distance it goes from, from here to here, okay? And so for this, I'm going to put five pixels as well, okay? Um, next, what we have is called the blur radius. And what this is, is the value, the bigger the value this is, the more the, the box shadow, the, the, do, the drop shadow is blurred, the shadow is blurry. And we want it to look fairly realistic. So we're just going to, we're going to go 15 pixels, like it's, it's going to spread out a little bit more. Um, these values, if you've ever done drop shadows in, in Photoshop, this might start to look familiar. You usually have to dis define the offset, like how, how far the shadow is from the right, and, or like horizontally, and how far the shadow is vertically. As as well as how much blur there is. So hopefully this is making sense to you. If not, you're safe just copying these values and experimenting with them and see what looks good to you, okay? Finally, last but not least, we're going to define the color. And the color in this case is actually going, we're going to use the RGBA value. It looks like this, RGBA. And then we have this, and then we have four numbers. The numbers are I'm just going to use X for now. We're going to change the numbers. They're going to be, whoops, X, 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 like that, okay? And RGBA stands for red, green, blue, alpha. And the alpha is the opacity value for that color. And opacity just basically means how opaque is it? Like how, how is it? Is it dark or, or is it see-through, you know? Um, so, um, our drop shadow can be any color we want it to be. Um, a typical drop shadow would just be black, okay? And so uh, the color for that in RGB would just be 0, 0, 0, 0. So RGB, red, green, blue, 0, 0, 0. That's going to give me a value of black. 
Um, and don't worry, if this isn't making sense, the RGB, because I know we didn't talk about RGB values, don't worry about it, because really you could probably just recycle this entire line and tweak the individual values to your liking later, okay? Just, just try to follow along, it'll make sense. And then this A value will be the opacity. If I leave that at like one, which is full, like 100%, then that means it's gonna be solid black. And a solid black drop shadow is gonna look kind of stupid. It's gonna look really, really fake. I want it to look a bit more subtle. So I'm gonna have an alpha value of 0.3, which is sort of like just 30% um, opaque, or in other words, like very, almost transparent. So it's gonna be very, very subtle, okay? So let's save that. And, and I hope that you were able to follow. Okay, box shadow, um, five pixels, that's five pixel horizontal offset, five pixel vertical offset. These could could vary. If these are bigger numbers, then your drop shadow is going to be further away from the element. Okay, 15 pixels, that's going to be, that's our, our blur radius, and that's just how much blur there is. If this is a bigger number, it's even more blurry. If it's a smaller number, it's going to be a sharper shadow. And then the RGBA value, that's just the color of your shadow. This is a good default value, but you can, of course, experiment with that if you want to. Okay, so let's hit save, and let's see what this looks like. Okay, um, keep a close eye around here because that's where I expect the drop shadow to go. So I'm going to hit reload and here it comes. There it is. Did you see it appear there? It's very subtle, but now there's a drop shadow behind there. Let's do the same thing for the main box. Okay, um, I'm just going to save myself some typing. I'm going to copy all of that and I'm just going to move it over here to main. And in this case, I'm actually, whoops, what did I do here? Oh, there we go. I wanted to put it inside here. And oh, of course, all my tabbing is all wrong. There we go. In this case, if I apply this, because this is a very dark background, I fear that this will probably be too subtle for, for people to notice. Um, so let's actually make the box shadow maybe a little bit further away. Let's maybe make it a 10 pixels, okay, there. And the blur radius, that's fine. Let's actually make this maybe 0.1 instead. So let's hit save and then we'll see what this looks like. So now we're, we're keeping an eye around the outer edge right there. And let's hit reload. Keep a close eye. There we go. Do you see that? Now there's a nice little drop shadow around there. It's very, very subtle, and obviously you'll want to experiment with it to find exactly the value that, that you're happy with. Um, but there you go. Now you know how to apply a drop shadow to a div element on your web page. I hope that that was useful to you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.